Hey guys, we have here the Vatra 12 volt 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I reviewed a few months ago. Now this battery is supposed to include low temperature charging protection. Now in the prior review video, I noted how exceedingly well this battery was built. However, at that time, I could not get the low temperature charge protection to work. And since then, there has been a lot of back and forth between the company and I trying to figure out what the problem was and how to get this working. Additionally, you may have seen they've left quite a few comments throughout the YouTube video. They are adamant that this battery should have low temperature charge protection. And they have been asking me to retest this for quite a while. However, I just haven't had the time and honestly, I've kind of lost interest after the amount of time I've spent on it. So their exact wording is, our batteries definitely have the protection function of low temperature cutoff. They also said that each of our batteries is rigorously tested before leaving the factory to ensure that it functions properly. Uh, so I think we need to spend a little bit more time just making sure we didn't miss anything. I'll show you guys what I've already tested and we'll do a few additional tests here as well. Now I'm reading from my paper here to make sure I get the wording on this right. After many tests in our factory, it is impossible to achieve the low temperature protection function by placing only one temperature sensor in the ice water. And they further state that you need to place all three temperature sensors in the ice water at the same time to trigger the low temperature charging protection. Now, that seems ridiculously silly to me. It makes no sense whatsoever. However, that's what they say to do, so let's go ahead and give it a try. Uh, so the company says I actually need to dip all three of these temperature sensors in at the same time. So you can see I've got all three of the temperature sensors bundled up here and it's also bundled to the temperature sensor for my little digital thermometer display. So we are charging at 28 amps and it's 20 degrees Celsius. So here you can see all three temperature sensors are in the water. We're at negative 3.4 degrees Celsius, negative 4.2 degrees Celsius, and we are still charging at 28 amps. So we're at negative five degrees Celsius and we're still charging at 28 amps. All three sensors, going to spray them. And you can see they're frost covered there. We're at uh, negative 13 degrees Celsius and we are still charging at 28 amps, negative 14 degrees Celsius. Now we can prove all three of these sensors are actually working. There's no breaks in the wire or anything like that because if I heat them up with a heat gun, uh, you'll notice I can trip them with high temperature disconnect. And you can see charging has shut off. We're at zero amps. Now I'll cool it back down with my fingers. And we're charging at 28 again. We'll try the middle sensor. Charging has once again shut down, zero amps. I'll cool it off with my fingers again. And we're back to 28 amps. So we'll try the last sensor here at the bottom. And for a third time, charging has stopped. So we'll once again warm it back up. And you can see it's charging again. So all three of these temperature sensors are functional. It's just the low temperature cutoff is not working. I've also went out to the manufacturer of the BMS. It's manufactured by SmartTech and solicited some information from them as well. Does your BMS part number PCM-L04S260-J03 have low temperature charging protection? A very simple, straightforward question. And I also asked if they could send me the data sheet for the BMS. Uh, the first person that wrote back indicated that the BMS does not have low temperature charge protection. And then about a day or two later, somebody else wrote back from the same company and said the BMS does have low temperature charge protection. And they finally sent me the data sheet, which I was able to confirm on the data sheet as well, that it does indeed have low temperature charge protection. They also have a United States contact and the company name is Battery Space. I'm not sure if that's just a distributor or if that's also, you know, a company they own or are affiliated with in some way. And they confirmed with their engineers and stated that it does have low temp charge protection and it can be configured in the software. So at this point, I'm thinking maybe the software wasn't configured correctly on this BMS. Battery Space does sell the cables to communicate with this BMS, but uh, when I asked, they were not willing to provide me the software and pretty much said that I need to order a BMS with the parameters that I want. Now, that's kind of silly to me. I kind of understand because you don't want customers modifying the BMS parameters, you know, putting something in there that could be potentially dangerous, but at the same time, I don't want to see how the thing's programmed and they won't give me the software. So, okay, whatever. So in the meantime, I've received an additional response from Vatwer, and they're now indicating that in addition to the three temperature sensors, there is also temperature control logic in the IC or integrated circuit on the PCB, printed circuit board. 
Uh, so today we're going to take apart the BMS and we're going to spray that IC with the, uh, it's computer duster, I don't know if it's liquid nitrogen or what, you know, the chemical is that super chills it and see if we can get this BMS to finally disconnect at low temperature. I think that may be the missing piece and I'm hopeful that this will work. So here we go. And this right here appears to be the chip that they are referring to and that is simply labeled U1. I don't see any indication whatsoever there are any temperature sensors around this. All I see is resistors, diodes, somewhat interesting to find out here. So let me go get my power supply and we'll give the test a go. All right, so you see the power supply is putting out 8.97 amps. The clamp meter is showing 9.9 .9 amps. Uh, I'm not even gonna touch temperature sensors. I'm just going to spray this IC directly. Well, it doesn't appear to have stopped charging, so there you go. All right, so we've once again have all three temperature sensors bundled up here. Spray some on the IC. So now we've got both the IC and the sensors cooled. Holy crap, it shut down. So was it the IC or was it the sensors? Okay, so now it's charging again. Let's try just the sensors. Still charging, so let's spray some on the IC. And it shuts down. So you need to cool the IC and the sensors to get this to work correctly. I've never seen something like that before in my life. Let's try just the circuit board again here. Sensors. All right, so all three, all four of those components need to be below freezing for this thing to work. All right, so there we go. We can finally conclude that this battery does indeed have low temperature charge protection. It is a bit strange. However, uh, in the real world, it doesn't matter what combination of sensors trips it as long as it does indeed trip. So if this is out somewhere where it drops below freezing, the entire battery is going to drop below freezing and it should trip that protection. If I would have simply thrown this battery in the freezer, it also would have triggered that protection and it would have avoided this whole mess. So I don't think it's necessarily a problem with my testing methods per se. Um, the company could have responded a little bit better. They clearly didn't have adequate knowledge of how their product functions. In fact, the BMS manufacturer themselves told me it doesn't have protection, then it does have protection. So at first, Vatra told me all the batteries are tested, but you know, then they couldn't tell me how to trigger it. So, so perhaps they're just throwing them all in the freezer and seeing if they shut off. Uh, but then they had told me, Will Prowse proves it has protection, so it has to have protection. But the battery that Will reviewed wasn't even the same battery. He reviewed the 100 amp hour version. As I've said from the start, this battery is built exceedingly well. These are still listed on Amazon for about $600. I will leave links to where you can purchase one or find out more if you're interested down in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to share those as well or any maybe suggestions on how we improve this testing process. Um, otherwise, please hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.